when DACA came around, it was like a veil had been lifted, like a black cloud, a weight was just lifted off of those children. They ran, they found all of the paperwork, they went to these teachers that helped them, they went to the principals for help to get the documentation to be able to. We gave, I can't tell you how much money we fundraised so that they could pay for it. Their families were really excited, so they paid too. And they truly took advantage in the good way of the opportunities that that gave them. They went to NWAC, they went to the university, they went and tried for jobs, managerial jobs. They sell cars now. They, they don't have to be on the lower echelon and they, they're using their given talents. They're using their creativity to build a better Northwest Arkansas, to build a better community, a more cohesive one, because most of the kids that are DACA recipients, they don't stay with a group of people, with one group of people. I just went to a wedding uh, Saturday. Are you kidding? Both, both kids were Mexican. But in the group, in the whole reception, there was every age group and every group of people from Northwest Arkansas, young people represented there, dancing, singing, loving that couple. You go to quinceañeras now, everybody's there. You go to any kind of function downtown, anywhere, and everybody, because these children are becoming the glue that binds this community together. And these kids are the glue, the professional gl glue and volunteer and service-minded glue that is now binding all of the different groups together. And that's what DACA has done. DACA has helped them to come out of the shadows because many of these kids weren't going to stay in the shadows anyway but that helped them to come out of the shadows and fulfill their God-given talents and work. And these kids, now there are some kids that are DACA recipients that stay in their little groups and that live in their prescribed neighborhoods. There are some, there are some that don't, don't have uh, formal education. Some are our workforce that work in construction, but you know what? They don't have to be the workers. They can be the supervisors now, proudly become the supervisors. And so in what I've seen, because I, I'm very blessed to still be invited to weddings and to you know, graduations and things like that. And I'm going to tell you that you don't see one group of people at those, at the weddings, at these celebrations. These celebrations are a mixture of all different types of people. And that's what these kids in particular are doing that I'm going to tell you my generation wasn't terribly successful at. I mean, we do get along. We do. There's a, it's a different, I'm so proud to see it. It's a, oh boy, now the word won't come in English. You know, um, it's a different dynamic when you go to weddings now. And, there, you, it used to be that Salvadorans stayed with Salvadorans and, and Mexicans stayed with Mexicans and the poor Guatemalans, you know, were kind of in between. And you know what? 
and the Anglo kids kind of stayed in one area and you'd have crossovers every no people are they're truly doing what the American dream is supposed to be the American dream that my ancestors came for that your ancestors came for that our president's ancestors came for that our secretary of state's ancestors came for only they these kids are doing it better than we all did because they are allowed to keep their language so they keep the connections with home but are able to venture out into the new world because they're fully bilingual they're fully biliterate they're fully bicultural so they're able to reach out to everyone whereas if DACA hadn't existed they might not have been able to reach as far as they're able to reach with that that job and with the freedom that they they deserve to have so